the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. So it's another cold, rainy day at the end of April. But we continue to celebrate the Feast of Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. And we ask Jesus to allow the power of the resurrection to touch us deeply in our hearts and to guide us through our lives. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you poured out your life for us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by dying and rising, you destroyed sin and death. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and her service of your church. Grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The church throughout Judea, all Judea, Galilee and Samaria was at peace. She was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, she grew in numbers. As Peter was passing through every region, he went down to the Holy Ones living in Lydia. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Lydia and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorius, Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Leda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was near, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord 
is the death of his faithful ones. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. So in today's passage from the Acts of the Apostles, we continue to hear this story of the church spreading further and further throughout the Mediterranean world, further and further outside of Jerusalem. And Peter is continuing the healing ministry of Jesus by being with people like Aeneas, being with people like Tabitha, and raising them up to new life. Now the thing about these miracles, these works, even though they are signs of the presence of Jesus, is that people can be just attracted to the, to the miracle and not really get at the heart of what Jesus is all about. And this is exactly what's happening in the, in the Gospel of John, although we're kind of taking this passage in mid-course and we don't have the whole context here. But basically this is coming right after Jesus is talking about the fact that he is the bread of life and that people are invited to, to eat of him and drink of his blood. Um, and there are all these people who are attracted to Jesus because of his miracles, because of the wonders that he worked. Um, but they don't really understand what Jesus is all about. And they don't really understand what he's talking about when he says, I am the bread of life. He's basically talking about the fact that he's going to give his life, his very self, for us, to save us. And some of these people who hear him talk just decide, this is a little too much, and then they decide to drift away, to drift away. In contrast, there's Peter and the Twelve who 
are basically tenacious in their belief in Jesus, tenacious in their discipleship. And so Peter says, we have no place else to go. We are with you no matter what. You have the words of eternal life. You are the Holy One of God. So even if Jesus is becoming unpopular in certain circles, for Peter and the Twelve, they are constant in their belief and their dedication to Jesus. And so it's a good lesson to us of being constant and devoted to being in this business of following Jesus in the long haul. Um, and that's exactly what uh, Catherine of Siena, the saint we celebrate today, did. Catherine was not very educated. She was from a prosperous family in Siena. And when she told her family that she did not want to be married off to a wealthy man in Siena, that she wanted to devote herself to Jesus, they said, okay, fine, then you can be the servant here. And so they gave her the job of washing the floors and taking care of the house. Um, and she did it. She just decided, okay, if this is the cost of being devoted to Jesus, this is what I'll do. But in time, she became one of the most influential women in Europe. Um, she, though not very educated, began to write letters to the Pope, began to write letters to different leaders in the area. And this was a time when the Pope had basically abandoned Rome and he was off in Avignon in France, um, just kind of hanging out there. Um, and people were kind of clamoring to get him back to Rome so he could do his job. Um, and nobody could convince him. No bishop, no cardinal, nobody could convince him. But Catherine did. Catherine finally went to Avignon and basically talked to him face to face and said, you are not doing your job. You have to come back to Rome. And he listened. Because of her dedication, because of her dedication to Christ, because of her dedication to the church, this woman who, who you would presume was just going to live in this little town of Siena all her life becomes this amazing influence. And now she is one of the patron saints of all of Europe, along with St. Benedict. So she is another example for us of um, stick to itiveness that we are called to follow Jesus through thick and thin when things are going well, when things are not going so well, that Jesus is always there with us and he calls us to always be there with him. So let us pray. We pray for the church. We pray for all those who follow Jesus today, that they may continue to be dedicated as a disciple. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all those members of the Dominican order, those who, like St. Catherine of Siena, follow St. Dominic, that God may keep them faithful to their charism, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for travelers. We pray for Father Bill and Father Tom, who are traveling today to Rome to be at our general chapter of the Montford Missionaries, worldwide meeting of our confreres, and that the Holy Spirit may guide them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick. We pray for all those who need God's healing. We pray for all those we know who are ill, those undergoing tests, those recuperating from surgery. And we pray for all those who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers. Today the Mass is offered for Nicole Paparwis on her birthday, that God will continue to bless her with life and with peace. We pray to the Lord. And for all those who have died, all of our loved ones who have gone before us, that God may raise them up and lead them into the happiness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we pause for a moment of silence. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, in your great mercy, receive these prayers, for we offer them to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory to your name. For our good is the law and so we live. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Filled with the spirit of Jesus, we are able to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us. And even in this world, as even in this world, it nourished the life of St. Catherine through Christ our Lord. So as you can tell from the things accumulating in the back of the chapel, we're beginning to collect non-perishable food and toiletries for a prime time in Torrington to care for the people who um, are dealing with mental illness. So if you want to bring in some things, feel free. We'll add them to the, the, the pile of stuff. We'll bring it to prime time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day.